Hello everyone! I'm so happy to be back with another video for you. Um, I've been doing a lot of videos this month working with the Sonic Kit as I am the workshop teacher for the Documenter Workshop. Um, I had so much fun putting that together and there are still so many gorgeous goodies left that I'm excited to do another spread for you. Um, I can't show you the back side of this spread as uh, it was one of the spreads I did for the workshop, so you'll have to go there to see that. On the back side, I've documented the friends that we've had um, in our new home. Uh, it's been almost two years now, so I don't know if you'd call it new. I made a point to make a spread about my friends, which I really appreciate. And I didn't have enough pictures of them and enough friendships documented in my album. So I did that. But on this side, um, I'm going to be documenting my kiddo's third birthday with a bunch of cute pictures of the kids from the party. So um, I'm going to try and incorporate all those photos in there and use bits and pieces from the Sonnet Documenter Kit, which I still have a little bit left. And I'm going to be using the paper pad and the printable labels and the digitals from the workshop a little bit. Um, I've also pulled some transparencies, some extra bits and pieces, some of the die cuts. Um, and then over here is the Bright Star Kit, which I think is just so fun and punchy and I love the stamp set, so I'll be incorporating that. Um, and then I pulled a couple of extras. These are from the Loot and Song Kit, and these are the add-on um, cards this month for the documenter. So I thought I would try and use all those. Okay, sit back, relax. I'm going to create for you. We're going to speed it up, um, and we're going to talk about design decisions. All right, thanks. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm getting all my pictures exactly where I want them. I'm cutting them down to fit the spaces. So I'm putting this one right here to a three by four down from a four by six. And um, this next one I'm going to cut to a four by four. Um, I often get my pictures printed before I map my layouts out. So I really, um, I get a lot of them on four by six and I get a lot of them on three by four and then I just cut them to fit the spaces that I'm working with at the time. It works really well as I'm just terrible at planning things out. Now that my pictures are in place, I'm trying to find the perfect cards to complement them. I love that present card in the middle on the top. Uh, it's perfect for the spread because it matches my son's shirt and it's about a birthday party, so it, it couldn't be better. Um, I then wanted to bring in some yellow because there was already some yellow on the birthday cake and on little Leo's shirt there. And so I went with that yellow card, and then I liked how that yellow card looked in the bottom corner because that little triangle sort of draw your, draws your eye into the page. But then Leo and the yellow card were too close together, so I had to move the Leo with the yellow shirt up to the top corner. And that balanced my yellows across the page, it balanced my blue-greens, my teals across the page, and then I decided to start adding some embellishments. Now this is where the whole process gets really long and tedious for me. I try everything. I try every label, every transparency, every heart, everything I can get my hands on, I try it on a part of the page or a piece of the card or whatever. So um, I did actually take out a lot of that process for you <laughs> to speed things up, um, but I kept all the bits and pieces that I actually used. So you can see how I sort of shuffle things around and try things in different places and, and finally come to decisions. So at this point in the spread, I've found a lot of what I'm going to embellish with and I'm still just going through things. Um, I'm looking at all these awesome cards, seeing if I can incorporate them, if I missed anything, um, or if I can replace anything with those cards. And then right there, you may have missed it, but I stopped recording and I took all of my cards over to the typewriter and I did my journaling with my typewriter. So you can see that all the little um, cards now have journaling on them. When doing my journaling, I made a mental note of where those embellishments were, so I left some room under the word party so I could have party um, go on the picture and on the journal card. I left some room for the circle that says yeah so I can have the journaling go around the circle like that. Uh, so that's why I do my journaling in the middle of setting up my spread so that I know that I can put my embellishments where I want them to go. And once the journaling's done, I just keep embellishing until I think the spread is done. Um, so you see I added a transparency love down on the darker yellow part of that card down there. Uh, now I'm just adding little bits and pieces here and there. Pretty soon I stop the camera and I put all of my cards into the pockets. Yep, right now they're all in the pockets. And now I'm adding some chunkier embellishments to the outside. 
Okay, so here's the final layout. Um, I added a couple of chunky embellishments on top after I put all the cards into the pocket protector, the page protector. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with how it turned out. It's fun, it's blue, it's eclectic, it's got way too many hearts on it, which is sort of my MO. Um, and I think it sort of captures that birthday party perfectly. And I love that the sonnet kit just keeps on giving and giving. I mean, this is my fourth uh, page that I've created with it. One was a, a two-page spread, which is also in the workshop. Um, and I still have so many bits and pieces left over. So I'm excited to keep working with this kit, and I hope you are too. Okay, thank you so much for watching today, and I can't wait to see what you create with your sonnet kits. Bye!